If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. What's up, Bombshells? Welcome to Bombshell 1111 Podcast, Therapy for Women of Color. My name is Kia, and I'm your host. Generally, podcasts request donations, but I want you to show love by simply subscribing to my social media platforms by visiting my website at www.bombshell1111podcast.com. I want to see thousands of subscribers on this platform. Leave your comments and I'll show love by shouting you out on my social media platforms such as Instagram and Facebook. I want to thank you for your continued support as always. And with that being said, let's jump into this new episode. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Bombshell 1111 Podcast Therapy for Women of Color. My name is Kia, and I'm your host. Tonight, you guys, we have a very special guest by the name of Trish. Trish is the Feel Good Gut Coach, a holistic specialist, stress expert, and intuitive eating advocate. So without further ado, you guys, let's welcome Trish to the show. Welcome, Trish. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for coming on and being a part of the podcast. Um, as I kind of stated before we got started, the topics that we're going to be talking about tonight um, are very near and dear to my heart and some of my friends as well. So I'm, I'm very excited to hear about the things you're going to discuss tonight. So again, welcome, 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 welcome. Yeah, thank you. I'm so excited too, especially because, you know, what we're going to talk about is near and dear to my heart as well. And it's very personal. And, you know, what I do for a living now started out as something really personal to me. So I just appreciate the space to share and, and chat about it. So Trish, and you're more than welcome. So Trish, I did a short bio um, in, the, in the advertisement in addition to the post um, about who you are, where you are and what you do. But I always like to allow the guests time to do their own personal intro because I may have missed something that you want the listening audience to know about. So can you just give us a short bio about you and who you are, what you do? Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm Trish and I go by the feel good gut coach, which is kind of this coaching practice that I got into because of my own experience with gut issues. So I, in my early twenties, got a diagnosis or a label of IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. And I had everything from poor, like poor digestion to low energy to all these issues that I could tell were stemming from the gut. So I started to study it and I actually joined my first health coaching program to help myself. I was like my own client going through this program, like, how can I change my lifestyle? How can I create healthier habits to manage this? Because it was really, really getting me down. I used the example that I would wake up in my early 20s feeling like I got hit by a bus, which just wasn't how anybody should feel at that age. So now I help other people who are struggling with IBS or irritable bowel syndrome make lifestyle changes so that they can manage their condition. Oh, wow. That's, that's very, 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 um, what's the word that I want to use? I think that that's very um, interesting because a lot of people do have that um, issue, but they are unsure as to what's going on. And then sometimes they just brush it to the side and kind of just take medications within like the drug stores to kind of like just get them by like Imodium and Melanta mm -hmm. and that type of thing rather than trying to find what the underlying issue is. So yeah, I, I have a strong interest in the work that you do. But for the listeners who don't have an understanding of what digestive issues are, or gut issues, or even what IBS is, can you kind of give us a, a generalized idea of what digestive issues are in IBS? 
Absolutely. So IBS irritable bowel syndrome is kind of a syndrome. So basically it's a collection of symptoms with many different causes. So it's not really like one specific cause and then you have this condition, right? That's why we call it a syndrome, quote unquote. Um, but basically it's digestive concerns like gas, bloating, constipation or diarrhea, abnormal bowel movements, stomach aches frequently, maybe frequent food sensitivities, where foods are starting to make you really sick and uncomfortable after you eat them, or other issues like low energy or skin health or brain fog where you're not really mentally there. And a lot of these stem from the gut. Our gut is our colon uh, that has this microbiome, this collection of good and bad bacteria. And sometimes this process or that balance or imbalance in that microbiome in our gut is at play when we have IBS. But I'll definitely, you know, as we chat, maybe explain more how you get IBS, like what, it, what causes it specifically and how you can manage it. But that's kind of the general gist. Oh, wow. So <clears throat> I see you kind of briefly talked about the symptoms of what IBS um, is, but can you, um, for the listeners who didn't catch that, what are some of the symptoms of IBS and how does the IBS affect the person's daily living or digestive issues? Yeah, absolutely. So when you have like a lot of times on a daily basis, you're going to have just plain old discomfort. Sometimes it's just really uncomfortable. Like people might not even know, but you're struggling with like really uncomfortable bloat or gas all the time. You're having to run to the bathroom because your ab your bowel movements are abnormal and maybe frequent or painful. And sometimes people just kind of live in this stressed out, anxious state. I think I see that a lot where they're like, I never really tell anybody about my IBS because who wants to talk about things like poop, right? right. <laughs> so, so you're just like kind of sitting in this like anxious state. And that's what I see a lot with clients and they're very anxious of social situations or mm -hmm. going out to eat, for example. And then sometimes IBS is really intense where it is affecting like just the foods that you can eat or you cannot eat. And it's, you know, you're out and about in the world at work or in social settings and you're actually having to run to the bathroom potentially, or you're just not there because you're again, uncomfortable. So I would say that's kind of how on average it affects people's life. So it's very much like a physical health issue, but I also think it's a huge kind of mental health issue too, because it's super stressful. Very stressful um, because I too experience IBS and I have friends that experience that. And it's exactly what you said. There are times where, you know, you have to proportion your food to make sure you don't overeat and you eat in portions so that you don't get sick. And then even if you tend to eat in portions, if you're not, if you're eating something that's going to irritate your digestive system, you still will have that diarrhea and some people the constipation. So you are absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. When it comes to the population or gender that IBS affects, is there one or more that it is the IBS affects the most or is it just across the board? It, it can be men or women or both. Yeah, you know what? It it affects about 10 to 15 percent of the population. That's like the statistic we know. OK, but I like to think not that I think this is a great thing because I don't want more people to struggle with it. But I actually think more people than that struggle with IBS and more men struggle with it than we than we know. So currently it's known that women actually experience IBS like two times more than men. And there might be some hormonal things. We have a lot more um, estrogen and less testosterone as women. And there's some studies kind of pointing to like, maybe testosterone has a protective factor and it helps our digestion and men have more testosterone. However, I also think that maybe men are just a little bit more shy about this. And maybe it's underdiagnosed in men, right? So right. we can say it maybe happens in women a little bit more because of gen genetics, but we at least know that women talk about it a little bit more so it might be more common in women but can absolutely happen you know across genders right right i agree i agree is there a, a cure or are there treatments available for digestive issues um or ibs i know other than eating healthy changing your eating styles and things like that that's one thing that can contribute to um, improving those issues but other than that what are some ways to uh our treatments for, for IBS, yeah. our digestive, digestive issues, um, Trish. Yeah, I think that that's one of my favorite questions. Like, can it be cured? I guess I'll start there. <laughs> uh, I think that it's not necessarily something like, you know, a 
like a cough or a cold where we're like, oh, here's the cure for it or some other conditions. Um, however, I think one of the things, here's the thing, it can absolutely be managed. And yes, you can go the route, like you said, of maybe over the counter drugs or even prescription drugs, but usually those only cover up the symptoms or alleviate them temporarily. Mm-hmm. Really long term management, or let's say getting closer to like cure or remission, is doing a mixture of changing your lifestyle. So changing your nutrition, changing your habits in many different ways. So movement and sleep are also really healthy um, habits that can help with IBS. I think I personally take a very holistic approach because nutrition isn't everything, although it's important. And let's just say that like, okay, you you make a diet change, but your IBS probably isn't just going to go away. It's going to involve looking at different areas of your life and stress is really huge too. So I think that one of the underlying causes of IBS is stress and we have the stress hormone called cortisol that's released when we're stressed and it's normal. But for those of us who are stressed all the time, which honestly in our culture and society is most of us, <laughs> we experience stress way o- more often than we really should. And that cortisol can mess with that gut microbiome that I chatted about and that can cause some underlying issues. So sometimes people might have a condition called SIBO small intestinal bacterial overgrowth where this bad bacteria kind of grows and grows and grows and it maybe grows because of stress it maybe grows because of poor diet or it maybe grows from like all these different things like not getting enough sleep and eating poorly and not moving my body and i'm stressed out all the time and kind of causes this condition so sometimes people can treat that underlying condition and they're fine their ibs goes away Now, this was one example. I won't say that everybody with IBS has SIBO with a small intestinal bacteria. (laughs) And then you're just like, it's it's your cure-all. That's just one example of like sometimes looking deeper at um, other conditions underneath the surface or really looking at your lifestyle as a whole to manage it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. That was a lot. That was a lot. (laughs) Because I think... Because you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cheat you. I'm not gonna lie and say, "Yep, there's one cure all," or you know, it's kind of complex. But I think a simple way to sum it up is looking at many different areas of your life and creating healthier habits in many different areas of your life is the best way to manage and treat IBS. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because you know, even personally, I noticed if I back up back off of the sugars, the dairy, and if I just kind of yeah. keep it clean, drink more water, no pop, no juice, none of that yep. type of nasty stuff. Well, good nasty stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I don't have any issues. I have no issues, none. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I totally agree. But then when I disobey and I eat dairy, of course, I'm going to have that issue 30 minutes later, after, even after I get done eating. So, yeah, you're right. And I can, it could digest properly, Trish, and everything. I will burp everything thinking yep. I'm all good. No. No. <laughs> so that you were like, this is a perfect example. Absolutely. Like, it sounds like there's some lactose intolerance. Dairy mm-hmm. is a big trigger. Sugar is a big trigger or just processed foods in general like pops and sodas Mm -hmm. and the reason so first of all I think that's great but I like how you said like it's good bad (laughs) because (laughs) because here's the thing too is like it's hard to live restrictive so that's why I say the more that you can manage your stress and your sleep and you move you're going to be less likely to crave sugars and you're maybe going to crave healthier foods and it just when you look at that whole lifestyle it allows you to maybe manage those foods um, easier and you're making better choices overall and you're not stuck in that situation. But absolutely, like that's an example of those triggers that you can identify, but sometimes are easier, like easier said than done. Oh, right. I just want to eat dairy and sugar. <laughs> yeah, easier said than done. Easier because you feel like, oh my God, this is not life. I cannot live yeah. like this. And then you're around people that's just smacking and licking on ice cream. you like, oh yep. my God. Yeah. <laughs> And you're like, and you're like, I would literally not, I would be healing over on the floor right now if, if I ate like that. Like what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Trish, let's talk about the feel good gut system. Um, this is a system that uh, you came up with, developed and created. So let's just kind of break it down um, and talk about each one individually. Um, the three areas consist of the mind, body and wellness. So um, yeah. let's break those down. 
Thanks for that. I love that. I created this feel good gut system. First of all, because I, I, it, the name is very intentional. I'm like, I want to help people feel good in their gut physically, of course, no more cramps, diarrhea, bloating, but also like intuitively deep down in their gut that they feel like, okay, this is livable, right? Cause complete restriction isn't livable. It doesn't feel good to be the only one having to be different. So in the mind section, that's where I really work with my clients on navigating the stressors of having IBS. It's like someone to bounce ideas off of and like role play even. How would I work through this in social situations? Or how can I get into a little bit more positive mindset and really take care of my mental health as well? And of course, a huge part of this is managing stress. So it also prevents some of the physical stuff, uh, symptoms and stuff associated with IBS. Right. So that's kind of the mind. And I like to start there, but I infuse that a lot within um, my programs with my clients. Body is pretty self-explanatory. That's like the nutrition, the like physical stuff. Like, okay, how can we eat clean? How can I make a meal, um, you know, on the go that's still healthy and it's going to help me? And, you know, what are some of the exercises and stretches that can help when I'm really bloated? And how do I hydrate more and get more water and, and choose water over you know, pop, how to do with my sugar craving. So that's all like the body stuff. And then wellness is the last component. And I add that in because that's like all these other things that can help you navigate life and really making it more fun and simple so that you stick with it. Cause I, the whole point of creating this system was so that clients don't always have to be stuck in this like IBS cycle for the rest of their life. And they feel just well enough to manage it for the rest of their life. Mm. Yeah, I think that's so important in any type of healing process, healing transformation is to address those three areas, the mind, body and, and wellness, um, because you have to kind of touch each area in order to fully heal. So, yeah, I, I, yeah, I like how you break that down, um, because I'm thinking as it relates to people who have, you know, mental health, that's a good yeah. way to start when you're doing like meditation in the mornings, you know, the mind, body and soul type yep. thing. Mm -hmm. Those are the three things that I use very similar Love to it. what you're using. So, yeah, I, I really like that whole aspect. So, Trish, mm -hmm. the services that you provide, are your services provided online, in person? How do you work with individuals with these issues? Yeah, it's totally online. Uh, right before COVID, I launched this like coaching business and I had a couple of in-person clients and then I was like, ah, COVID. So now I just work with clients even if they're local, but I love it because I can connect with people all over the world and it's either on phone or audio call or video call, whatever client's most comfortable with, but it's totally virtual. We send things via Google Docs and email and such so that we can, um, it can be done in the comfort of your own home, which mm -hmm. is pretty important for me. I tell clients like show up in your pajamas. I don't care. We're just here to chat about your health. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. You mean people where they are. And I think that's so important because then you, um, the room is the door is more open for really building a rapport and engaging and then getting to the root of it. So yeah, I, yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, so Trish, is there anything you feel that I missed that you would like to discuss or inform the listening audience about in reference to digestive issues or IBS? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, this is so great. I so appreciate everything we have shared about. I think you asked such great questions. Uh, oh, but one thing you. I'll say, yeah, absolutely. One thing I'll say that kind of like bring it all together. I love that you in your services and your, um, you talk about, you said the mind, body and soul. And I obviously have mind body wellness and there is this direct connection between our gut and our brain mm -hmm. via something called the vagus nerve. It's directly connected. And I do truly believe that our whole body is connected as well. And even our spirit and our soul. And, um, so know that that's a tangible thing that when we have that drop in our stomach feeling, that's usually our brain trying to tell us something that we can't think it's like subconscious and we get those butterflies, right? Or right. we just get that good feeling like I should do something. Mm -hmm. So we know it goes downstream from our brain to our gut, but it also goes the other way from our mm -hmm. gut to our brain. So our gut health, if it's out of whack, that's going to cause anxiety and depression and, and stress and stuff like that. So know there is this connection and don't like discount that. I think it's so important and I always like to share that this direct connection um, and it's really important and that's why it's helpful to look at you know managing IBS and digestion from like a whole 
whole mind body perspective and not just body right I totally agree totally agree what is one piece of advice you would like to leave the listening listening audience with about uh, addressing digestive issues and or IBS what -hmm. piece of advice would you like to leave with yeah I think simple consistent action is better than a ton of action at once so I know this for myself and I see it a lot of clients where it's like let me go to Google spiral and like let me just look up gut health one more time and see what else I can like try out and then you're trying three different diets at once and you're trying all these things and you become more confused versus if you can just stick with a simple change a week one little habit this week I'm just gonna work on increasing water intake and then next week I'm, I'm just gonna work on trying to increase or better my sleep that is going to help you far more in the long run than if you try and do it all at once we don't need to be superheroes here simple consistent actually action actually wins in the long run with IBS yeah and and I told you before we started the podcast that you have to be that consistent because if you don't then it's just like all for nothing once you get to feeling better. But yeah, you have to stay consistent and it really does work. Um, yeah. I'll share this with you before we um, end the podcast. I had a nutritionist on um, and she shared some really good information and she shared a list of uh, foods to eat. And I'm like, girl, this is nothing like uh, flex seeds and peanuts. I'm like, I'm just going to die. She was like. <laughs> Just be creative with the menu. Be creative. Right. Um, chicken and fish. Okay, I can do the chicken and fish. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> you know, but like oh, everything else, it was just like basically you having to turn into somewhat of a vegetarian. Um, that's what I felt, Trish. Um, oh, it's very plant based. Yeah, very, very plant-based. plant-based. Very plant-based. But it's again, it all goes back to whatever type of diet that you know you kind of decide to go with when you're dealing with you know, I know specifically IBS, um, because I have it, um, it it all depends on you being consistent. Like you said, it it totally depends on you being consistent. And just to kind of touch on your point, I don't think you have to be plant-based eating more plants is always going to be healthy for you, but keeping it simple, like almost food as it should be rather than food made in a factory is a good rule of thumb. But keeping it like, yes, simple, clean meats that aren't like super, super fried and processed chicken nuggets, but like a chicken breast, (laughs) you know what I mean? Like that definitely is helpful and oftentimes helpful for gut health. Like I'm definitely a promoter of eating meat if clients want to, if they don't want to. Always like, I always just advise, you know, meet yourself where you're at and what feels good for you. Yeah. And then you can make more changes over time. But if you're like, man, that is not going to work, then don't make <laughs> that change just yet because you're going to be too stressed about it. You're going to fall off the wagon. Then if you could say, mm, you know, what? I can start with chicken and salmon and then I can add some things in here and yeah. then slowly over time make those changes. You're going to have more success. 28 days, right, Trish? 28 days. Yep. Yep, exactly. <laughs> and 28 days, but some people try and do it like five days. I'm going to get this figured out this week by Friday. And you're like, no, no, Look, give it Trish, a month. I'm the some people. I'm the some people. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're admitting that. Hey, hey, I totally get it. I was that way. I still kind of am that way. It just takes like, honestly, intentionality, consistently reminding yourself of it. Um, and it's helpful that I'm a health coach because I'm constantly reminding other people of it. So it's a reminder for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Trish, for the listening audience, can you provide your social media platforms for the list for anyone who may be having these issues and want to link up with you to get the services that you're providing? Absolutely. I'd love to connect with you. I am most active on Instagram. I am at feel good gut girl on Instagram, uh, on Facebook. I'm health coaching by Trish health coaching by Trish.com is also my website. We'll have like my direct links and things there. Uh, and then last, I'll just say, I do have a private Facebook group called the feel good gut group. And you can join that if you want a lot more free content and stuff as well. And yeah, I, I look forward to connecting with anyone who's, who's struggling. Oh, wow. Well, I definitely will be joining the group. Awesome. Um, yeah, and sharing that with my near and dear friends that also suffer from IBS. Um, yeah, I didn't know you had a, a, a private group. Definitely will be joining that group today. 
Um, Love it. So, <laughs> yeah, thank you, Trish. I, I totally enjoyed having you on the podcast. It was such a vibe. We connected on so many <laughs> levels, um, even <laughs> down from your name to my mom's name. Yep. So um, definitely enjoy you coming on the podcast. Um, anyone you'd like to give a shout out to, support system, anything like that? Oh my gosh. Yeah. My mom's great too, Linda. <laughs> you know what? My boyfriend's supportive and, and I have a couple of their coaching friends that are really supportive. So you know who you are if you're listening. Oh my gosh, Alex, who I co-host my podcast with. So yeah, thank you all for supporting me and thank you so much for having me today. And Trish, for the listening audience, what's the name of your podcast and how do they check uh, yeah. out that podcast? Sure, sure. My podcast is called Ice Cream You Scream, a health and wellness <laughs> podcast okay i am the lactose intolerant health coach and my friend alex is the regular guy who likes ice cream and we just chat about health topics and uh it's informative but we have a little bit of fun too i can imagine the topics on that (laughs) yes yep oh my god and i love the name of your podcast love the name thank you thanks so you guys with that being said i think we had a blast here tonight uh trish you are so full of energy and i love it you match my energy level to the t yep. um you guys so without that without with i can see she can't i can't even talk right she's got me so excited and so turned up and lit i can't even talk right you guys so you guys we're gonna head out for tonight thank you for always being a continued support with bombshell 1111 podcast Always remember, you guys, you're a bomb within your own shell. Peace, love, and light. Until next time, you guys, good night. If you enjoyed this podcast, please make sure you subscribe so you're notified when a new episode is posted. Rate, review, and share this podcast with your family and friends. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you're leaving with some valuable information that can help you on your personal journey. Also, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Bombshell1111 or at Bombshell1111 TV. You can also check out our mental health page, Your Health is Your Wealth, on Facebook, which is a page created to inform and support individuals with mental health and other health conditions. And with that being said, always remember, you guys, you are a bomb within your own shell. Until next time, peace, love, and light.